talking about stepping out of the comfort zone. And a question just to lead in. And this is how someone responded to this question. Is your Christian life too comfortable? Here's how you can tell if your Christian life is too comfortable. This is what someone put. You don't attend church with a high level of expectancy. You expect maybe the preacher will shut up eventually, a final song will be sung, and you'll get to go home. You don't have an expectancy. You don't seem concerned about spiritual things, about the spiritual condition of the people around you, your friends, your neighbours, your family, people you know. You're not concerned. You don't have spiritual conversations with non-Christians too much. Maybe it's been a long time since you had such a conversation. Maybe some of your friends don't even know that you come to church, that you claim to be a Christian. The Bible seems lifeless to you. You just pick out the easy bits, the nice bits about love, about forgiveness, but you ignore everything else that's in the Bible, about holy living, about honouring God with your life, about sin, about the leading of God's Holy Spirit. Your happiness at Sunday service is more important about what it takes to make you comfortable, about finding the seat that you like, about hearing the music you like, or such things, rather than what matters eternally about the unsaved that you know, about developing your spiritual life and growing in your faith. The needs of others don't concern you too much. They don't move you. You don't give uh, in, in the light of that. But God just has your spare change after you've done all that you want to do. And your prayers don't seem to go any further than the ceiling. You don't wait on God, expecting. And you don't believe that God could perhaps do something amazing in your life today. Something radical, something life changing. If that's true for you, then maybe your Christianity has grown too comfortable. Too comfortable. And if that's true for you, I, I pray that you would step out of the comfort zone. Step out of the comfort zone. I want to make you a bit uncomfortable this morning, in a good way, I pray. I want to encourage you to step out of the comfort zone that we so easily want to stay in, to not be afraid, to do what's hard, because sometimes what's hard is what's right. Amen. Don't be afraid to do what's uncomfortable. We'll talk a little about some of those kind of things. Be willing to do the hard things, because sometimes the hard things are the right things to do. Fear not. Stand with the right. Even when it hurts, even when it's uncomfortable, even when it goes against the grain, even when everyone else is caving in, you're going to stand for Christ. You're going to stand for right. So my message to you today is step out of the comfort zone and do what's right. Step over the line and do what is right. Moses did that. Moses stepped out of the comfort zone. Moses, we read of him in Hebrews 11, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, as he got older in his life, he refused to be called the sons of son of Pharaoh's Amen. daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. He was Moses, brought up by the Pharaoh's uh, daughter, brought up in Pharaoh's court, in Pharaoh's royal palace, but he chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the places of sin for a season. He stepped out of the comfort zone, didn't he? Moses did that. Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. He saw the treasures in Christ. He saw what it meant to step out of the comfort zone and to, by faith, trust God. He knew it was going to be hard. He could have stayed behind in all the comfort of Pharaoh's court in Pharaoh's house, where everything was laid on, but his faith was in Christ. He said, I'm not going to be ashamed. I'm going to stand. I'm going to go by faith where God sends me to do, to do God's will, rather than to stay in the comforts of Pharaoh's house. And by faith, Moses, we know, ultimately stepped out of the comfort zone as he trod his foot 
where the Red Sea was, and he walked on dry ground Amen. across the Red Sea. Moses, by faith, he stepped out of the comfort zone. And will you be one too who will step out of the comfort zone by faith? In this church, there's a man. In this church, there's a man who the nursing homes ring up at all kinds of early hours and late hours of the day and night. And they call this man from this church to stand by the bedside of a dying man, of a dying woman, to pray. And he takes the time there to see them through till they take their journey to another world. That's stepping outside the comfort zone, isn't it? That's being uncomfortable, woken up at some ungodly hour, you could say, of the day or night, to go and stand by the bedside of someone who needs mm -hmm. to be prayed for, who needs to find that assurance of the hope that is in Christ. That's stepping outside the comfort zone, people. And I want us to be urged to that action, each one, to find our place where we can step out of what might be a bit uncomfortable. My prayer is that we as a church will be mobilised like that. That every one of us will find that which God has put on our heart to do and do it with all our might. I urge you to make that decision for yourself. Ask yourself, I want to reevaluate what I'm doing with my life. Where am I at? And make this decision. I'm not going to fall for the world. I'm going to be a disciple. I'm going to stand for Christ. I'm going to be a man of God in my family. I'm going to be a woman of God in my family. I'm going to stand for what is right. I'm going to decide to do what's hard sometimes. I'm going to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I'm going to find ways to serve God that stretch me. That stretch me. I was looking lately for someone to run an errand for me to help transport an ageing mum to be able to go and visit her sick daughter in hospital. And I put the word out. And someone was kind enough and willing to put themselves out. To give of their time unselfishly to help a stranger with a mission of mercy. I was glad. Someone said, I'll volunteer. I'll step outside the comfort zone. I will help this one in need. I was glad when they said, I can help. Someone was willing to step outside of their comfort zone. And there's men and women here today who want to do just that and are doing just that. There's women here in this church today who step outside of their comfort zone week after week and they give of their time freely to teach English as a second language. And some of them were telling me how hard that was for them. It's something they've never done before. It's something that was uncomfortable for them at first. But God has enabled them and God is using them for His glory. What a challenge it was for them to step outside of the comfort zone and to do that ministry. Now God is using them to bless many and to reach many. What a blessing it can be to just step out by faith outside of the comfort zone for God's glory by faith to reach and bless others. And as a preacher also, I myself need to make sure that I step out of the comfort zone, that I don't stay in the comfort zone. Now more than ever, we need faithful, authoritative preaching that stands strongly against falsehoods. I need to deliver what people don't want to hear Amen. of times. I need to deliver that faithfully to you. In faith, in love, with courage. Pray for me that that will be so. Amen. It's not always comfortable for me. And nor should it be for any who stand here. Because we're accountable to God. Mm -hmm. And it's not always easy for me. For any of us. For Michael. He's still learning the ropes. He did a fine job this morning. It takes a certain gumption. A certain pluck. A certain bit of courage. Mm -hmm. A certain bit of getting uncomfortable. And standing up and doing something. Do we care more about what others think than about pleasing God? Sometimes we stay in the comfort zone because we just want to make it easy for ourselves. And the Lord takes us at times into some hard places, into some uncomfortable, painful places. Let us watch unto prayer. I urge you to move out of your comfort zone. 
Think about your life. Think about how you can make that move, that transition, from the comfort zone, if you like, into the cross zone. The cross zone. We are in good company today because the king of the universe is here. His old rugged cross is where he went. And our Saviour calls us there too. He calls you and me to our cross. He calls you to your cross. He said to them all, if any man will, come after me. Let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. He's saying here, make a sacrifice. He's saying, be willing to take some weight on your shoulder. He's saying here, be willing to identify with me, no matter the cost for you. Let's not get comfortable. Let's go from the comfort zone to the cross zone. Take your cross daily. Say, I'm going to identify with the cross. I'm going to identify with Christ. Let's not get comfortable in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong crowd. Get out of it. Make a decision to leave the comfort zone and enter the cross zone. Take up your cross daily and follow Jesus. It won't be comfortable there carrying a cross, but there will be blessing for you and for others. The Lord Jesus, think of him. He stepped out of the comfort zone, didn't he? Our Lord Jesus Christ. He left the dazzling wonders of heaven's glory. He laid aside his rich royal robe and he left that glorious throne on high and he stepped down to earth's dimension. And he stepped down to become a man, to become a human being. Philippians 2 we read, Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. And took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. God Almighty, clothed in human skin, God manifest, revealed in the flesh. It says, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. He was betrayed, abused, forsaken, afflicted, hurt, his body racked with excruciating pain, spat upon, beaten by wicked men. And he bore this all willingly, freely for you, for me. He took our place, our sin, our shame, our penalty. God's great love <laughs> motivated him to step out of glory and into human skin, to wrap himself in flesh just like yours and mine, yet not sinful. And he stepped down from the glorious majesty of that royal throne on high, willing to surrender his life for you, to lay down his life for you in love so we can know his love. And if our Lord was willing to step down from glory for us, what should we be willing to do for him? What should it make us want to do for him? The Lord Jesus, he didn't choose the easy route. He didn't choose to come to win the popularity contest. He stood against the false scribes and teachers of his day. He cleared the temple of them. He held the religious leaders of his day accountable for their actions. And he shook the establishment of his day. And it was said of him, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Our Lord left the comforts and he took the cross. He set his fate as flint, it says, as a flint towards Jerusalem, knowing what awaited him there. Our Lord Jesus reached out to the people that everyone else rejected. He was willing to touch the people that were unclean, that were contaminated with dreadful diseases, to the most of sinful of the sinful. And the Lord Jesus went this way that was not easy for us. There was a time that he took the road less travelled. We read John 4 verse 4. It says that he, he took a direction and he was questioned. Why are you going this way? And he said that he needed to go through Samaria. In John chapter 4. Now the Samaritans, the people of Samaria, were a hated people. And people would go out of their way to avoid them. They didn't want anything to do with them. But Jesus went out of his way to go through Samaria. To reach these people. Friends, Jesus chose the road through Samaria. He had a mission in mind. He knew why he had to go. He was willing to go where no one else would. And people there needed his message. Our Lord Jesus was willing to go out of the comfort zone to minister to a woman 
at the well. The woman at the well. A woman desperate. Desperately needing the message of new life. And she found it in Christ. Because Jesus sat down by the well and he talked to this woman. The woman that no one else wanted to talk to. Because she had a reputation. And she found Christ. Many times we don't like to step out of the comfort zone. We're like making excuses, avoiding it at all costs. We just like it where it's nice and easy and comfy. But will we be willing and available to allow God to move us out of our comfort zone? Will we be willing and available? I put a call out just last week as well of a need. A woman needed accommodation for herself and her two children in crisis. And I put out the call and someone stepped out of their comfort zone and said, I'll help. Amen. Someone said, I'll, I'll put myself out. I'll help this woman. I'll help her. We're stepping outside of the comfort zone to help a stranger, to show a bit of Christian love and compassion. There was a time when someone in this church had an impossible financial need. Someone reached into their own pocket and gave them a generous gift anonymously. They didn't get any credit out of it. They didn't get anyone to pat them on the back to say what a great person they were. They did it. Even though it was uncomfortable, they did it. Why? They wanted to be a blessing. They wanted to do something for the glory of God. They wanted to step outside of their comfort zone. Do something that wasn't easy to do, but something that would bless and minister and give glory to God. Now we can all stay where it's all nice and comfy and comfortable and we can miss out on being a blessing. It may be uncomfortable to step outside of that comfort zone. Think about it for yourself. Think about some examples through the scriptures. We see how God made some people move. Abraham was told, go to a land that I'll show thee. He didn't know where he was going. He didn't know where he was going to end up. God moved Adam and Bethany from the USA to this land to learn our funny lingo and our funny ways. It would have been uncomfortable for them to shift house, to uproot from family and what was familiar to what was strange. Us Aussies are real strange people. And, and God has used Adam and Bethany to bless the people in this land for the glory of God. They stepped outside of their comfort zone. Think about Philip, another Bible example. In Acts chapter 8, the Spirit of God took Philip out to a desert place. You know, he went and ended up in a desert of all places. God was blessing him where he was. But God moved him on. God took Philip to a place that he may not have chosen for himself. A wilderness, a desert place. God took Philip here to a, an Ethiopian unit riding along in a chariot. And Philip sends the Spirit of God tell him to go to this chariot, to talk with this man, to share Christ. And the man came to faith in Christ. And some say that this ministry to this Ethiopian eunuch opened up a whole new mission front, reaching the nation of Africa with the gospel. Because Philip went and talked to this man in a chariot. Sometimes God calls us to a desert road, to a wilderness place, a road which is unfamiliar for us. Something that's challenging, maybe even hostile. And our Lord wants us to take it with both hands, this challenge. To expect that we can trust Him in trouble. Because trouble will surely come, as He said it will. And He's promised us yet that He will never leave us or forsake us. So God will sometimes lead us into a desert place, into a strange place. Because there's someone to reach there. And there's some way we can grow there our character, our faith. And he takes us where we need to trust him more. You might be in a desert place. You might feel like you're in a wilderness time. He's taking you there so you can trust him more. So you can lean on him more. So you can find his strength. He's a plan for us even in our wilderness times. That we listen to him more. That we be led by him. That we follow his spirit like Philip did. Even if it takes us to a desert road. To be led by the Lord for the Outreach to people that we can connect with. Reach. The workers are few. 
have always been few, they're few today. We need to get to work. We need to get to work. And to get to work, it means stepping outside of the comfort zone. It means I might actually do something different from what I've always done. I might actually say, I'm going to make myself uncomfortable and volunteer to do something in this church. I'm going to take a risk and do something for God I've never done before. It's stepping out of the comfort zone, isn't it? Someone was telling me just this last week how we need to step outside of the walls. You know, this, these four walls are not meant to contain us. They're not meant to restrict us. This is just where we meet to get a bit of nourishment so we can go out into the mission field all around us. And this one was telling me we have to get outside these walls. That's true, isn't it? We need to get outside the walls. And this man was sharing for me how it was hard for him to witness, to go door knocking, to go witnessing to people, to go talking to people about Jesus. It is hard. It's hard for all of us to do that. He was talking about leaving the comfort zone. Because that's what God's called us to. It's easy to stay in the comfort zone. It's easy just to stay in the cosy, comfy four walls of a church. But we have a mission to accomplish outside these walls. So what is the comfort zone? Really, the comfort zone, you can liken to a birdcage. This is how someone described it. Uh, how God made the birds never... God who made the birds never made bird cages. It's men who make bird cages. And after a while, we become cramped and do nothing but chirp and stand on one leg. That was Oswald Chambers, a, a great man of God of history. He said that the comfort zone can be like a bird cage. God doesn't want us to be all caged up. And he wants to set us free to serve him. And that means we've got to step outside the cage, doesn't it? That means we've got to say, yeah, I'm going to leave what's all comfy and familiar and I'm going to do something new and different. I'm going to let God unleash his gifts in me that he's given to me. I'm going to do some things that make me feel nervous, but God will help me to do them. By faith I'm going to do what God's put on my heart to do. You can choose to stay in the birdcage. You can choose to stay in the comfort zone. But it's going to keep you from learning. It's going to keep you from growing. It's going to keep you from serving. It's going to keep you from doing God's will. Staying in the comfort zone can hold you back from God's best for you. What he wants for us. It takes faith to step out. Get out of the birdcage. Get out of the comfort zone, if you like. When the Lord Jesus stepped into people's lives, he challenged them to get out of the comfort zone. Think about some of the fishermen by the Sea of Galilee. He asked the disciples there, leave everything and come, follow me. Leave everything and come, follow me. And they did that. Like that. Matthew 4.20 And they straightway left their nets and followed him. It was a leap of faith. It was a leap of faith as they trusted God. And friends, it's for us too. When Christ calls and urges us to trust him, we need to step out of the comfort zone. And by faith, follow him. Trust him. I like to say, do something scary. For the kingdom of God. Do something scary for the kingdom of God. You might say, oh, preacher, I've never prayed in public before. I've never read a Bible reading before. I've never really witnessed to anybody before. These are things that are scary for all of us. God wants you to do something scary. Put yourself out of your comfort zone. Take that leap of faith. I was at a training class last week, like a secular training event, and each one in the group had to give a talk. And these were just secular guys and girls. And I had my opportunity, and I challenged the group. I said, we have to make a choice, either to receive the Lord Jesus Christ or to reject Him. Amen. And by failing to receive Him, we are rejecting Him. And that was scary to do. These were just, uh, this was just a secular group of people. It was a kind of scary thing to do. It was scary to step outside of my comfort zone, but it was the right thing to do. It was my one opportunity to say Amen. something, to stand for Christ in what was really an uncomfortable thing to do. What about you and me? 
Do we aim to be a witness where we live and work? I know some of you guys are really keen witnesses in your workplaces. There's no doubt that you're, you're a believer in Christ because you can't shut up talking about him. That's a good thing. Of course, we've got to use a degree of tact. But we, aim, we should aim to be such a Christian that the, there's no mistaking who we belong to. Amen? Amen. When you're in a workplace, they know there's something about you that you stand for something. That you have faith in Christ. That you take that opportunity to drop a word here, a word there. Aim to be a witness to everybody in your circle of acquaintance. Your family members. Don't be afraid to speak up. To say something about the gospel to them. Don't be afraid to be a witness. I know it's hard in a secular school. It was hard for me in, in a, an average everyday kind of school, but I wasn't <clears throat> backward in coming forward. There was opportunities to engage with other Christians, to get to fellowship, to get to witness, even in your school place, your workplace, your home place, wherever you are. Don't be afraid to stand up for Jesus Christ. Time is short. It's going to be scary, but step outside of your comfort zone. Don't just blend into the crowd, be like a chameleon, and just shut up about Jesus. Don't be gutless. Come on. You can do it with God's grace and help. By faith you can stand outside of your comfort zone. Stand up for Jesus in front of people, in front of your workmates. There's no mistaking who you belong to. Another thing, for example, is dedicate your Facebook page to the glory of God. So you're not going to post trash on there. You're not going to post things that are smut or smutty or doubtful on there. You're going to dedicate it to the glory of God so people know who you belong to, who you identify with, that you carry the cross. You're not part of the crowd. You're going to stand fast. You're going to stand out from the crowd. You're not going to post anything questionable because you're going to do all things to the glory of God. And that means determining that you're going to do the hard thing because it's the right thing. Amen. Do the hard thing. Oftentimes it's the right thing. For example, make it right when you owe someone some money. Get it right. Get it sorted. If you owe someone some money, pay it. Make it right. Don't muck around. If an apology is due, make an apology. Do the right thing. It's the hard thing, but do the right thing. Seek to give and receive forgiveness. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. Love your enemies. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Do what's difficult. Reject the lies and speak the truth in love. Speak against false doctrine. Speak up against sin. Speak up, be a witness by faith. Resist temptation. It's all about stepping outside the comfort zone. In other words, do what's difficult to do because it's the right thing to do. Amen? Because it's the right thing to do. And I pray that we would be such men and women of faith who would step out of the comfort zone. For example, women, when you go down to the shop to choose a dress, you will think about how modest is that dress? How modest is that dress? Does it reveal too much? I'm talking plainly here. Talking plainly. Does your dress reveal too much, ladies? Go and get one that doesn't reveal so much. Do it. Buy a dress that you can wear to the glory of God. That you make decisions about what you wear based on giving glory to God. Because that's what matters. Men, you won't go down and buy that alcohol that is damaging you. And is damaging your family. It's damaging your testimony. You won't waste your money on such things. Young people, you won't hang around with the crowd that's dragging you away from following God. You won't hang around with those. You might try to reach them for Christ, but you're not going to hang around them and be all matey around them because you're going to stand for Christ. You've got to cross that line. You've got to be unashamed to stand for what is right. You won't be deterred. You won't hold back. It takes faith, brother. It takes faith, sister, to step outside the comfort zone, to maximise your life for God as you dedicate every heartbeat to Him. But watch out, you don't slip back. You know, 12 spies were sent into Canaan's land. 12 spies, and they went to spy out the land that God had promised His people. And 10 of the men said, 
There's giants in the land. They live in these huge fortified cities, these fortresses. The giants are everywhere and we're not able. And most of the people said, yeah, I believe it. They were fearful. They feared about these giants that were just too big for them to face. And in Numbers 14 it says, the congregation lifted up their voice and cried and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, would God that we had died in the land of Egypt. Or would God we had died in this wilderness. And wherefore hath God the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be prey. Were it not better for us to return into Egypt. And they said to one another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Here are these people, the children of Israel, God's people, they've just been transported over the Red Sea and, and approaching the Promised Land. And they said, let's get someone to be our captain and let's go back to Egypt. You know, if there had been a democracy, Moses had a very low popularity rating, didn't he? He, he, would have, he wouldn't have been voted in. He'd have been voted out. And the people, all the people of says here, let's get back to Egypt, they said. Hey. Let's go back where it was more comfortable. More comfortable being a slave of Pharaoh? But that's what they thought. It's more comfortable back in Egypt. But Joshua and Caleb brought a good report. They said, don't be afraid of them. They urged the people to follow God and to go into the promised land. To step outside of the comfort zone. Sure, there's some fierce giants there. We all face giants. Giants of unbelief. There's gigantic things in our lives that want to stop us from following Jesus. There's problems bigger than us. Sure, Joshua and Caleb knew there were some fierce giants ahead that they would face as they obeyed God and crossed the River Jordan. But they had their eyes on the Lord, didn't they? Rather than on their problems. People today, we can trust the Lord to be faithful to his word. Caleb stilled the people before Moses and he said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. These two faithful spies, Joshua and Caleb, they looked ahead because they saw what God could do. That God had triumphed over Egypt and Pharaoh and all the false gods. Joshua and Caleb knew that God could lead them on out of their comfort zone, and that God had prepared the way ahead for them. And so too we are called by God to step outside of our comfort zone, to leave some things behind, to new assignments, new missions, new work for us to do. If we are in the will of God, we need not fear, as He will guide our steps. Now some people want to go back to Egypt. There might be people here this morning, you might say, oh, it was kind of easier in Egypt. I didn't have to come and hear some preacher challenge me. I didn't have to come and uh, maybe uh, take some of my time to do some Christian things. It's kind of easier back in the world. It was easier back in that life, in that lifestyle. I want to go back to Egypt, some people say. It's got that magnetic pull all the time, that magnetic pull of the world. And it's really easy to settle into a casual kind of Christianity, a kind of comfy, warm Christianity. Uh, where some people just coast along with their Christianity. They're just cool, calm and casual, light and breezy. They don't want to take the hard road. They would rather have the easy road and just kind of be in the middle. Or they want to go back to Egypt. They like the murmurs of Moses' day when they found the way too hard. Numbers 21, it says that they, the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. They spake against God and against Moses why well, have you brought us into this wilderness to die out of Egypt? There's no bread, there's no water. Our soul loatheth this light bread. They're getting manna from heaven, mm. miraculous manna coming from heaven. And they say, we hate this stuff. <laughs> what? God's supplying this miraculously out of the sky and they're still grumbling against God. Why? Because they missed the comfort zone of Egypt. They got hungry for the garlic of Egypt. They got hungry for the Pharaoh's herbs and spices. They hankered after the smell. Oh, I can just smell the Pharaoh's cooking. <laughs> and a lot of people are like that. They just want to go back to Egypt. They're stuck in the comfort zone. People of God, let's not be like that. Amen. Let's not be like that. Amen. When the going gets tough, they get going backwards. Mm -hmm. Let's not be like that. <clears throat> when the going gets tough, dig deeper. I say to you that it will be a hard road 
for you. You know, there's some countries where they preach the faith, health, wealth and prosperity gospel and say, God's going to make you rich. It doesn't work in some places, does it? Where it's the real world. It's the real world. And to stand for Christ means you're going to get crucified. To stand for Christ means you're going to get beheaded. To stand for Christ means you're going to get tortured to death. <coughs> Certainly not comfort zone, is it? What about for you and me in this easy country? Are we going to be led by the Spirit? Are we going to be stepping over the line? Are we going to get busy for God while we can? While we have the opportunity? Are we going to stretch ourselves for the glory of God? Sometimes we don't want to stretch ourselves. And some of you are pretty muscular because you have been stretching yourselves down at the gym. You know, that's a good thing. You've got more muscles than me because you've been stretching yourself. What about spiritually? Spiritually now. Stretch yourself spiritually for the glory of God. Determine to be full on for God. No half measures. Leave that comfort zone and get mobilised. Now, there was a young ma a girl talking with her pastor one day. And she was sharing how she was the only Christian where she worked. Here she was in this factory, and she said, I'm the only Christian in this factory where I work. I get nothing but taunts and sneers. Everybody's poking fun at me. Everybody's laughing at me. It's more than I can stand. I'm going to resign. And the preacher said, will you tell me where lights are placed? <clears throat> what has that to do with it? The girl replied. Never mind, the preacher said. Answer my question. Where are the lights placed? I suppose in dark places, she replied. Then the preacher said, yes. And that's why you have been put into that factory mm -hmm. where there is such spiritual darkness and where there is no other Christian to shine for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now sometimes he puts us in the dark places, doesn't he? Yeah. So that we can shine for his glory. And she went back to that factory with more determination than ever and she shined the light of her testimony in that dark corner and she led nine other girls to Christ. Yeah, nine of her colleagues, her workmates. Sometimes we need to just simply trust God and do what's uncomfortable. You now many times we find it uncomfortable to step out and witness. It's one of the main things we could consider. Just the thought of opening our mouth and sharing our faith can be scary can make us feel uncomfortable to say to someone, to tell someone about Jesus, to share the gospel, to share your faith. But we need to go to places like that. We need to talk to people that make us uncomfortable. We need to do things that make us uncomfortable and say things that make us uncomfortable. Friends, just think of these things today. There's much more I could say. I've probably got too much to say here, but just quickly, Nehemiah is another Bible example. Nehemiah, he was in the comfort zone. Nehemiah, he was uh, in the king's palace, the cup bearer of the king, but God called him out of the comfort zone. God called Nehemiah out of the comfort zone. Nehemiah heard how the wall of Jerusalem was broken down, uh, the people were in despair, he was concerned for Jerusalem. His community was in trouble, and he knew that something had to be done, and it had to start with him. What about us? There's things we should be concerned about. We should be concerned about Elizabeth. We should be concerned about Adelaide. We should be concerned about the loss. <clears throat> Nehemiah got concerned and took action. Paul was another one. Paul didn't stay in the comfort zone. He went into the non-comfort zone. He was stoned. He was imprisoned. He was shipwrecked. He was beaten. But God had a purpose for Paul. And God has not called any of us to be uncomfortable. Um, but rather to be a witness for Christ. Witness for Him. Be willing to leave your comfort zone. You now, someone has said God places many of His blessings outside of our comfort zones that ask us to come and get them. It's that, oh, that birdcage again, isn't it? It's outside the birdcage that our freedom is. It's outside of our comfort zone as you trust God to take you to a new dimension of faith. As, God, as you trust God to help you be a stronger Christian, it means stepping outside what's comfortable for you. Uh, someone has compared it to like a swimming pool, jumping into a swimming pool. You're there by the side of the pool, and everybody else is enjoying themselves in the pool, and uh, someone yells, come on in, come on in, the water's fine. But you put your toe in the water, and it's a bit cold. Oh, it's a bit cold in that water. I'm like that. 
And you see that people are having so much enjoyment in the water, and so you decide to join them and you dive in to the swimming pool. There's a few seconds of coldness, but it quickly just becomes refreshing. And you spend the rest of the time just enjoying. And you don't think of those uncomfortable moments when you first jumped in. It's breaking through the comfort zone. Think of that as a kind of picture of what it means for you as a Christian. It might be a bit uncomfortable for you to do something that you've never done before. Something that you don't feel easy about. It's easy to get comfortable and stay where you are. But God wants to take us out. Amen. And to be as those the Lord called to the mission he's called us to. As Moses, as Nehemiah, as Joshua and Caleb. As the Lord Jesus ministering to the woman at the well. As Paul. <coughs> Moses. Many examples. where It's where we, by faith, step out of the comfort zone that God can use us. When we take that risk, when we pay that price, we can stay stuck, stagnant and static and be fruitless, or we can be sensitive to God's leading. Rather, let's cry like Isaiah did, Here am I, send me. Friends, just to wrap up, God is calling us to action. He's calling all of us to take action today. Like Nehemiah, to see what needs to be done, to get concerned and to take action. To be willing to be a witness for Christ. Don't be ashamed. Decide today, hey, I'm going to change what I put on Facebook. I'm going to change what I say to people. I'm going to change the kind of language I use. The kind of way that I talk to people. Because I'm an ambassador here. I've got a job to do for God's glory. I've got a responsibility before my family, my friends, to be a, an out and out Christian. A full on Christian. And to be one who's going to get to work. Now this message is really talking to Christians. Perhaps you're not a Christian today. Has Christ got the authority over your life? Have you trusted him? You can accept his forgiveness, his salvation gift, by simply trusting him now. Calling on his name. Letting go. Leaving behind your old way. And finding that new way. Stepping out of the comfort zone, and as a Christian too, let's find that empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Do something scary for the Kingdom of God. Let us pray. <clears throat>